Hey there, and welcome to the tour of our year three, four-ish um, low maintenance vegetable garden. The first year we had the garden, there was just one bed and it was totally eaten by the deer. So I don't really count that. Um, I've kind of lost count now though. So uh, anyway, it's the first year we were really able to plant. And um, this is also a little bit later than I typically share our garden tours. This is a fall garden tour. So you get to see some of the things that are winding down for the season, some of the beds that I've planted for our fall garden, as well as a few things that didn't work out. Like you're gonna see some fails, <laughs> as well as some successes, which I think is just the story of every year in the garden, isn't it? So I'm gonna start outside the fenced area. I did plant a couple of beds out here. Um, over here is a giant rhubarb. I did have some artichokes and they've already produced and I've taken them out. Over here is a um, asparagus bed that's just in its second year. So they're pretty small. And this is where I grew garlic this last year. So I'll be planting that again. These are supposedly deer resistant plants, which is why I have them out here. Um, however, you will see that our deer eat everything. At the end of the season like this, they didn't bother this the whole summer, but uh, in September they started eating the poisonous rhubarb leaves. These are our deer. <laughs> they also ate almost all of the leaves of our pumpkins. Thankfully I had the little pumpkins already grown. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but pumpkin leaves are spiny and they typically are left alone by deer, not ours. And you can see the asparagus here growing. So then everything that grows inside the fence is protected. These are our um, beds that we made out of a composite decking material and they have been holding up really, really well. Um, the other low maintenance things we've done is the bark chips and wood. So this year when the weeds started coming up through, I just laid another, it's very easy to put it down. It's been so dry here, laid another um, layer of bark chips and cardboard and I have not had to weed uh, at all. I hardly have to pull weeds out of these beds. Um, some areas I keep covered with straw as a deterrent and to also keep the moisture in. Kind of give you a, a bigger overview here. And then we'll talk about kind of individual areas. That's our little seating area that we did the broken concrete patio. We have a video on that. I have to tell you, it's so fun. It's so fun to be out here um, watching the plants grow and not having to work on it all the time and being able to enjoy our view. What I also don't typically share is kind of the working area, but this is what we have over here. We've added a little, little bench. Um, I hope to really do more here at one point and get something on the walls to provide um, storage and roof the area a little bit. This is our DIY watering system set up and I just kind of throw some plants over there. It's typically the stuff that I don't share, but let's go on to the fun stuff, shall we? This is one of my triple crown thornless blackberries and I just have it planted with some beautiful sunflowers. They just grow up in it. This is one of my favorites. It's called Strawberry Blonde, um, and I love it. It's so pretty. What I have discovered about Triple Crown blackberries, and I um, wrote a post about them. I love them, the flavor, the size. They need a lot of sun. So this, this one gets a lot and does well. And um, you'll see as the tour continues, I have them planted in another area that doesn't get as much sun and they don't do as well. So that was a good thing to learn about the Triple Crown. We have a Himrod grape growing on the arbor. It's in its second year, um, so no fruit this year, but next year we should get some fruit. Um, I have an article about how to grow seedless table grapes and how to prune them. 
and I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. These are our beans. These are emerite filet bean. They're stringless bean. It doesn't matter how big they get, they're always tender. I love them, they're one of my favorites. But I also grow a Fortex. I always grow both of them. Fortex beans grow really, really long and big, and they are also a filet that stays tender for the most part, even when it's big. Oh, you can see how big they are right there. See that? I got to pick. <laughs> I love these beans. This one row gives us tons of eating and lots for freezing. And I should mention that these long, narrow beds, you may have seen them in some other videos, they're two feet by 12 feet, and we have them permanently set up with cattle, paddles, cattle panels in them, and they hold um, climbing things and tomatoes. Okay, and then we have our set of four by six raised beds. This one held um, beets and carrots in the spring, and then I replanted them. We harvested the cabbage in the back, and then I'm just letting them grow little baby cabbage hedges, heads. If you leave your cabbages, you cut them and leave them, they'll grow smaller little heads after that. So these are my fall carrots and beets. And in order to keep the ground squirrels from eating them, I have discovered that bird netting, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. Bird netting is hard for them. They, keep, they get stuck in it. So row covers don't work. They just eat through or walk under the white row covers, but the bird netting seems to be working to keep them out of um, these and they will eat. You can see they've kind of eaten before I did the bird netting, they ate some of my older carrot tops. So they will eat all of that. This is the pepper bed. I always keep the peppers covered every year here in Western Oregon to try to get really ripe peppers. Um, I open up the sides and then as the weather is cooling now, I'll close up the sides so we can get a few more weeks of ripe peppers. We have a lot, these are jalapenos right here and they're nice and big waiting. I gotta come do a lot of harvesting. This bed is kind of a mishmash. It's broccoli in the back, kale and Oh, see the little heads coming up? This is another one I left, uh, this red. And I have the little teeny heads, and I just think they're kind of cute. I've replanted some kale for the fall. This kale has been kind of taken over with aphids, so I don't really harvest it anymore. Um, but these broccoli shoots just keep producing. These were planted back in June, and I just keep harvesting little shoots from them. This is uh, I ran out of bird netting, so this has half bird netting and half um, row cover to try to keep the squirrels out. And this is our fall lettuce planting. You can see under there, we have quite a few. They've taken off, we got some spinach. These starts I started in a um, outside, but in the shade in a seed bed and then transplanted them in here because I can't get things to start from seed when it's so hot. We've had a hot, dry summer. All right, and these are the berry beds, and you can see these are the triple crown, and they don't look nearly as good as the other ones. They don't grow as big, and the berries don't grow as big. They just get more shade here from our oaks. By the time the sun comes there, we don't get the western sun. The raspberries, however, do like it. They like a little more of the shade, and so they're doing pretty well here. Um, these are ever-bearing red raspberries, and this back one is um, a, f a, a golden berry called Anne. We have harvested a ton. They have a really big harvest at the beginning of the season, and then you'll see all of these are going to come on in the next month. I don't know if there's any ripe right now. 
there's a little one. They're much bigger than that. They have a delicious flavor. If you have a chance to grow golden raspberries, do it. They are so delicious. Okay, turning around from our raspberry beds, this bed is the broken concrete bed we made. And it is full of, this is my cutting garden. These are zinnias, cosmos, uh, sunflowers, where I let them grow wherever they land. And I have some snapdragons here. And I have been harvesting these for our vases inside for a few months. And I love it. And these are where I have the tomatoes this year. Again, the long, narrower beds with cattle panels in them. And my trick for the tomatoes, which uh, you may have seen in another video, is to use bungee cords. It's so easy, you just tie them up with that. And look at the size of some of these. I've got to come out, look at this one. Oh my goodness. Is that gorgeous or what? That is called mortgage lifter. It's a delicious orangey, and look at that. I love how it's got a red, it's got more of a red bottom. Uh, the other thing that I've loved this year is this new tomato I grew called chocolate sprinkles. And they're not quite, they get a little bit darker than this. They taste a lot like black cherry. They're an heirloom. They're just a really delicious and they've produced a lot because they're small and they just keep producing for us. So I think we'll be able to get those for a while. I do love the black cherry and so I have grown those this year. This one I think is more, oh this is a ripe one. Look at that. Oh they're so delicious. The flavor of a black cherry heirloom tomato is amazing. And I have a lot of San Marzanos that need to be harvested. Used in our sauces and chutney. This is the rock wall garden. I'm kind of disappointed in it this year, actually. Um, I've always grown the sunflowers, which are beautiful. But this year, I think they provided way too much sun. Um, we've harvested a, quite a bit of tomatillos, which is nice, but the, the zucchini, believe it or not, I have hardly been able to get any zucchini from. I think I've harvested maybe a total of 10 from these two plants, which is unheard of, and they're already getting mildew from the colder evenings. And then I grew the nasturtium to kind of fall over the side of the bed I thought would be so pretty but I think it choked my basil my basil always looks beautiful here and it is sad sad looking basil I haven't even gotten one um, batch of pesto made I think maybe I'll get one out of these sad plants so that's been I have to do some revamping and the clematis in the center which looks so beautiful in full bloom in July just then completely died back and I wasn't sure if I should cut it back or what, so I will definitely be doing some revamping of this bed next year. But that's part of the fun of gardening, right? You live and learn, you do things different. Um, over here, <laughs> this, I, I have never had a snow pea keep producing as long as this one did. It looks really sad, but believe it or not, we keep getting little snow peas off of it so I haven't I haven't cut it back yet and uh, of course the Juliet tomatoes I grow those every year the Juliet grape tomatoes they're prolific delicious and they work for even dried tomatoes and um, sauces too so it's a it's a great plant I also tried uh, some celery this year I've grown it a couple times in the past. Um, you really only need, well, we only need one or two. We don't eat celery that much. So it's enough to come out here and grab a couple stalks and use in cooking. So that was a win. I'll do that again, I'm sure. The other um, sad thing was our cucumbers. Before I discovered the bird netting, the squir ground squirrels ate all the cucumbers and I didn't have any other 
seeds left. And then a sweet reader sent me some seeds. It was kind of late in the season, but I thought, well, I'll try. And um, they haven't really done much. I have a few little blossoms on this one. I might get a few little cucumbers from it, but I think that's it for our cucumbers this year. Here's the other end I wanted to show you of our cutting garden. I also have some hydrangeas I'm growing in here because I can't grow them outside of the fence. And uh, this year, I love these asters that I grew from seed. Aren't those gorgeous? Let me show you some of the other colors. Look at that purple. Oh, they just make such a great cut flower in this darker pink. And then I do have one Cinderella pumpkin that looks like it's going to be good to bring in for some fall decorating. So thank you so much for hanging out with me um, and, and taking this tour of the vegetable garden at our farmhouse fixer. And I hope to be back with more gardening and cooking and DIY things for you in the future. So have a great day and enjoy your garden. Mm, so good.